Hello all and happy new year. Welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. It's time to heal, transform, and learn to live our happiest lives. Today we have a great show. We meet a lead actress in the Disney Plus original movie, Godmothered, a child artist prodigy making headlines, and a survivor of the Bosnia War spreading love and empowerment. We first meet actress Jillian Shade Spader. She discusses her leading role in the Disney Plus original movie, Godmothered. She also sings one of her original songs for us. Next, we meet artist prodigy, Tyler Gordon. He shares his experience of going viral for his painting of Vice President-elect Kamala Harris and how he felt after receiving a phone call from her. Then finally, we meet the very inspiring Dr. Ama Shabish Arais, author of the memoir, The Cat I Never Named, a true story of love, war, and survival. Let's meet our guests. Jillian, welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to have you. You're there with your guitar. In a little while, you're going to be playing your original You and Me for us. I'm excited yes. about that. Thank you. But uh, first of all, let's talk about this role that you have in Disney Plus's original movie, Godmothered. How exciting. And so exciting. It's crazy. It, um, came out, I guess, a week ago at this point, a week ago Friday, and it's been crazy. I had a great time filming. It was really fun. I've never done a project like this. It was really magical and cold and a blast. <laughs> Wonderful. Tell us about your role. Oh my gosh, Jane is like an angsty teen who just likes her laptop and like chilling with her headphones in, you know, typical teen things. We've all been there. But she has really bad stage fright because of the loss of her father, but really loves to sing. So we watch her throughout the movie and figure out if she can overcome that or not. Exciting. Well, I've seen a lot of promotion for the movie and it looks really, really good. So <laughs> Jane, is that role, is that much like you? Oh my gosh, we, we are total opposites. She is very much an introvert. I am very, very loud and I don't stop talking. So we're probably opposites on that aspect, but we both like singing and songwriting and yeah. music in our family, which that's a similarity. That's wonderful. And how do you prepare for a role? Oh my gosh, a lot of writing work. For Godmother, we had an acting coach on set and we wrote lots of like, me and my little sister, she drew pictures, I was writing essays, like we were just yeah. doing lots of character work before and you come up with a lot of backstory that isn't actually shown in the movie, but you understand it so you can understand the character. So a lot of backstory writing. Yeah, that's good to get to know the character, right? You gotta, you gotta really live it in your head. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So tell me about working with Isla Fisher and Jillian Bell. How was that? They are wonderful. I love those humans with all of my heart. Um, they are the sweetest people and Mary Elizabeth and the rest of the cast, they were all so nice and mm. so funny and all such hard workers. And it was nice being on a set with all women pretty much. Um, yeah. Director was a woman, writers, the whole main cast pretty much. Very feminist and it was great to be around. <laughs> I love that. I love that because you could all really like, you understand one another, right? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to growing up and you were, were you always in theater? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I did all the school plays. I was always doing all the little musicals and shows and concerts. And then I started doing regional theater when I was 11 probably and I did Les Mis and a panto and had the best time and that's pretty much right away I went to LA and started doing TV auditions but I would have continued doing theater if yeah. I wasn't in LA. <laughs> so how but growing up like how did theater help you? I mean what do you think about the arts in school and how important those are and how it could help other children? Yeah, um, theater's a great place. I think it fundamentally ties into everything acting, so I was really glad I did that. 
Yeah. But it also is just such a nice community for kids, I feel like. Like everyone is together and working together on something and gets to express their own talents and their own ideas. And it's a really fun place to be and very yeah. inclusive and nice. You really get to be yourself, right? And uh, build on your self-confidence. Totally. So you have a new album coming out. Yes. Yes, hopefully in January. In January. Tell us about that. Like, what inspired you for most of the music on the album? A few of the songs are singles that I put out over quarantine, but it's all within the last few months. And then a few of the new ones, a couple I wrote by myself, a couple with co-writers, and I just kind of, it was my I'm Bored During Quarantine album. Like, I feel like that's where the inspiration was. And um, it's a little all over the place in terms of there's a couple like ballads, a couple almost like rock type songs. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, it has a mix of everything. So there's something in there that everyone will like. Yeah, a little something for everyone. So we'd love to hear from you now, your ac acoustical, vi uh, acoustical version of You and Me, and that's on the album. Yes. Wonderful. I believe cool. there will be an acoustic version of it on the album too. We have to get that together. But there will be. <laughs> well, please look forward to it. Cool. This is you and me. Three days since you left me, waiting since you left me, baby. And I'm sorry, it sounds so bad, but at least there's still a chance that we won't say goodbye. Cause you and me could talk, you and me could write about the places we've been, the things that we've been Jillian, thank you. Ooh. So you have two songs on the soundtrack for Godmothered. Yeah. How exciting. Really fun. We had the best time recording them. It was really cool getting to work in a studio like I'm used to, but in an acting job. That was fun. <laughs> and you performed in the movie too, right? How was yeah. that? It was cool. It was a, I don't want to spoil, so plug your years if you haven't watched yet but it's a big concert scene at the end and it was cool because there was a real audience there when we were filming so it was kind of like singing on a stage for a big audience but for two days and that's 10 hours both days it was funny <laughs> yeah that's incredible Jillian thank you so much for coming on wake up with Marcy and sharing with us and so exciting about this movie Godmothered on Disney plus so happy thank for you. you. Thank you for having me. Well, wishing you so much success con and continued success and have a wonderful one. You too. Thank you. All right, Jillian. Bye. Bye. Next week on Wake Up, we meet Lisa Mateo, journalist and certified personal trainer. She shares with us how to stick to our New Year's fitness resolutions and her resistant workout pants by Agoji. Actor Michael Devine, a series regular on The Undoing, airing on HBO Max. And actress Dee Dee Pfeiffer, she plays Denise on the new drama series by David E. Kelly called Big Sky. Next up, we meet child prodigy Tyler Gordon. Tyler, such a privilege to have you on Wake Up With Marcy. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So let's talk about that piece of art right behind you. So that that is the new cover for Time magazine, which you painted, you drew. Yes. Yes, it is. 
Yeah. And I, I, actually, on fun fact, I actually have to draw or, or, or paint around four paintings and they got to choose which one they liked. And because of this, you are now the runner up for Time Magazine Nickelodeon's Kid of the Year. Yes. How does that make <laughs> you feel? Me, um, so I'm just really grateful that I even made it this far, to be honest. So you also have a painting of Kamala Harris. And let's talk about that. What inspired you? Well, Kamala Harris, she really inspires me. Um, she's one of the first of many. She broke through tons of barriers herself and I have as well with my stutter, me being deaf until I was six, and me being a wheelchair for two years. So she just really inspired me to be myself and keep going. That's wonderful. So let's talk about those hardships. Um, how was that for you when you were younger? How did you get through that? Well, I just never let stuff get to my head. Um, I've always kept going and kept pushing. And just kept trying. So you had a vitamin D deficiency, is that right? And that left you will bear, uh, wheelchair ba bound, is that correct? Yes, for about two years. And what did you do during that time? You were still painting. Yes, and actually, um, right when I got out of the hospital from surgery, the first thing I did was paint. So that really helped you. What could yeah. you say to to someone else your age going through a difficult time? Well, just keep pushing, keep trying, and just never give up. That's wonderful. Great advice. So let's talk about how old were you when you started painting? So I started painting when I was 10 years old at a school STEM fair. They opened up a new art category, so we were allowed to enter art into the competition. So I thought it would be a good idea to pay my principal. So first, first I asked my mom for one of her canvases, because she paints too, and she used to paint a lot back then. So at first she said, no, because I'll be wasting her materials. So that night at three in the morning, I had a dream, God telling me if I didn't use my tiling, he was gonna take it away. So. Oh, wow. I ran to my mom's room and told her about my dream, and she told, j j just told me to go to bed. It was no big deal. So the next night at 5 in the morning, I had the exact same dream, and so that day at 6 in the morning, um, she let me use one of her smaller canvases, and actually in 17 minutes, I painted my principal, and with that same painting, I actually ended up winning the school STEM fair. That is absolutely incredible. And that's one thing I want to highlight, how little time it takes you, each one of these paintings. That's average, right? Yes. The time. And how do you decide who you're going to paint, your, your subjects? Um, I usually paint who inspires me or inspires the world. Well, that, let me tell you, I. I, all of these subjects that you have chosen are so inspirational. And now you are an inspiration. <laughs> Thank so, you. That's incredible. So your artwork is now displayed at the Beverly Center. Is that correct? As part of the Heirs to the Thrones exhibit? Yes, it is. At the Beverly Center, um, that's actually where the Kamala Harris and Joe Biden pieces are. Oh, incredible. Then this gallery called Heirs to the Throne. And so is it open to the public right now? Yes, it is. How long do you know? To January 31st. So who it, it like really inspires you? Like you started with this art at 10 years old, but there must have been something that you were doing prior, you were drawing, there must have been this creative genius in you from a very young age. Um, well, tons of people inspire me. Um, like 
the basquiat he, he inspires me just to try new types of paintings and my mom also inspired me just to keep going that's great so what is next for tyler gordon well my my new virtual art gallery is not open so the only thing you need to view is i think a um, laptop desktop or vr goggles and you could find that at ty gordon or tyler gordon world.com and on that same site you, you can also purchase some of my merchandise which my most famous pieces you can get it on t-shirts sweaters dresses anything you can imagine and you can also get some prints too so you can have it printed on anything so you can have the prints or you can put it on a shirt or a dress yes how and, fun is um, that they actually just surprised me so my new limited edition sneaker and apparel is now well they're help doing that for me well tyler thank you so much for coming on wake up you are you. a true inspiration and keep doing what you're doing. And then I can't wait to see what you're doing in just a year from now. So thank you again, Tyler. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Next week on Wake Up, we meet Lisa Mateo, journalist and certified personal trainer. She shares with us how to stick to her New Year's fitness resolutions and her resistant workout pants by Agoji. Actor Michael Devine, a series regular on The Undoing, airing on HBO Max. And actress Dee Dee Pfeiffer, she plays Denise on the new drama series by David E. Kelly called Big Scott. Next up, we meet author Dr. Amra Shabish al Rice. Thank you so much for coming on Wake Up With Marcy. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Well, you have quite a story to share with us. So please, we, I want to hear it <laughs> in your words. Um, first of all, thank you. Uh, that is very kind of you. I'm going to start by saying that I was born hated in former Yugoslavia, my country of birth. Um, I was discriminated against as a Bosnian Muslim, but by the time I was 16, I was uh, living under a military siege by Serbia, a neighboring country that decided they would territorially expand. And as part of that expansion, they would um, invade Bosnia and ethnically cleanse my country from people like me. I was perceived as a form of ethnic impurity. Um, and even though I was just a kid, 16, I played volleyball. I was about to fall in love with the boy for the first time. And um, I suddenly overnight was living under constant bombing um, and lived under the siege for 1,150 days, starving with no normal schooling, something that everyone can now relate to um, given that we're living through this global pandemic. Uh, but I lived through a pandemic of, of visceral hatred, um, but luckily I survived. Oh my God. And thank you so much for sharing your story here. Um, what was it, I mean, how did you get through? Well, I did have a wonderful family and I lived with my family. I was at the, 16 at the time. And that was really a source of hope. But there was also an unexpected kind of love that I encountered, in fact, before the war started. My father and I ran into a um, group of refugees that were escaping into our city uh, just before the city of Bihać uh, was besieged, where I grew up. And we uh, found this uh, little kitty that would not leave us, follow us home, and adopted herself into our family. And in fact, on the very first day of bombing, June 12th, 1992, my younger brother and I would have been killed if it were not for Matsi. And Matsi in Bosnian means kitty. So talking about that kitty, you've written a book. 
called The Cat I Never Named. So what brought you to this place? Why did you want to write this book? There was a, um, a specific question that I got from my younger daughter, Dina, a couple of years ago. Mom, what will happen to me and Jana, her older sister, if you and dad are rounded up as Muslims? And that terrified me, um, given that I had survived genocide simply for being who I am. I knew that there must be other children and teens and adults who feel discomfort and fear um, about what may happen to them given their background, whatever that is, whether religious, racial, uh, socioeconomic. And um, I almost felt a sense of panic. Um, and in a way that I was advocating my responsibility as a genocide survivor to share a story like this so that others can see where hatred can take um, any country. Uh, hatred is not exclusive to any nation, any one group of people, and we see it happen every day in the United States. Absolutely. So what has it been like for you to tell your story? And what could you say to someone else that wants to share their story? I was, um, I clearly waited for many years because the war ended in 1996. I came to the United States on January 17th, right around Martin Luther King's day, in fact. Um, and my life um, changed um, in that moment. Um, so for many years, I was thinking about writing um, my story, but I was terrified to go back into those emotional moments um, because it does mean diving uh, back into this whirlpool of um, pain and difficulty that I had survived. But I do have to say it's incredibly empowering for anyone who ever has any kind of uh, hesitation about writing their story, whatever that story may be, I would encourage them because it is an act of self-empowerment. I, I grew up in a country where um, I've never read a story with Amra in it, with a Muslim child as a main character and I was invisible um, growing up and, and I had given uh, the story not just to myself and my children but any, any young adult and any adult who has ever felt marginalized or excluded or voiceless in the way that I, that I have felt uh, uh, growing up and, and certainly through surviving uh, the genocide in Bosnia. So one of the things that you have said is that hate is even more powerful than love. And that breaks my heart, but I understand why you say that. So what, what could you tell us to, to help us maybe move past that hate and open up our hearts a little more to love? I love how you asked that question. I do think that we need to do that. I do believe that America is at the critical, irrespective of what one's background or political views are, I think we're at the critical juncture where we need to decide who we are. Um, and no one can decide that for us, but ourselves individually. During the war, I realized that I was so viscerally hated that somebody was killing me every single day simply for who I was. And I, um, so many people that I have loved, family members, um, were taken away from me, killed, raped, injured. My house was bombed. My mom became deaf. My father is no longer here. And all of those stories are in the cat I never named. But I realized that I could not make someone love me or accept me or feel that I belong um, in a society. Um, the only thing that I could control and that I think any of us can control is who we are individually, what is internal to us. Are we going to reciprocate um, uh, with hate? Or are we going to reciprocate with education and love and resilience? And that is what I opted for. As you know, I'm a professor at Columbia University now. Last week, I was teaching lectures about ways to counter hate in Jordan, in um, Italy. Um, I will be speaking in Canada. Um, and that would not have happened if I didn't dedicate even the days during the war when I had no electricity, no food, um, and constant bombs around me. I was teaching myself English. I got my dad's old dictionary from his college days and memorized every word of English. If I didn't do that, um, I wouldn't be here today. I won some math and physics competitions. I taught myself uh, math and physics throughout the war and that helped me get here. 
So my message to anyone listening would be to really focus on what it is that they can do individually to change their own life and lives of those in their most immediate communities. I want to thank you, Amra, for telling your story and your fight and your fight against hate and helping us all to change our views and the strength in being the individual that we are, no matter who we are. Uh, and I, I really appreciate you coming on again and sharing your story. It's incredible. Um, and again, we can find your story in the book so you can continue educating us. And we all need to be educated to change our mindset. So thank you, Amra. Thank you very much for having me. Next week on Wake Up, we meet Lisa Mateo, journalist and certified personal trainer. She shares with us how to stick to our New Year's fitness resolutions and her resistant workout pants by Agoji. Actor Michael Devine, a series regular on The Undoing, airing on HBO Max, and actress Dee Dee Pfeiffer, she plays Denise on the new drama series by David E. Kelly called Big Sky. Wake Up With Marcy is sponsored by True Serenity Tea, which is a monthly subscription box that delivers award-winning loose leaf teas from around the globe to your doorstep. Check out trueserenitytea.com to order your subscription box. Thank you all so much for spending your Saturday with me. Today, I had such incredible talent and a true story of hope. This is why I do my show, because of these amazing stories. I want you all to know that your dreams are possible. There is hope, and I want you to always believe. Stay connected with me during the week on Instagram at Wake Up With Marcy, and for information on the show and my guests, check out wakeupwithmarcy.com. Remember to be kind to yourself and others, and have love in your heart and give it to others. And I will see you next Saturday. Bye.